Imagine if all cars behaved like this. Instead of falling apart after a single crash, what if we all had cars that were indestructible? Would there be fewer fatalities caused by car accidents? What would indestructible cars be made of? And could this end up being a bad thing? This is what if, and here's what would happen if all cars were indestructible. Every year, nearly 1.25 million people die in car accidents around the world. That's an average of 3,200 deaths every day. In the United States alone, over 2 million people become injured or disabled from car accidents each year. It's no secret, roads can be dangerous if we're not careful. So, would an indestructible car be able to solve our safety issues? First, we need to decide what our vehicles would be made of. They could all be cyber trucks. These are made out of a type of stainless steel alloy, which is the same material used in spaceships. But are they nuke-proof? Probably not. We would want our cars to be completely indestructible, meaning that if we were to throw a nuke at one, our car would be the only thing left standing. Maybe we could all drive around in US presidential limos, which are essentially drivable tanks that are completely bulletproof. The only issue with them is they cost about $1 million per car. Instead, we'd most likely take the materials used in the Cybertruck and coat them with a substance known as graphene. This rare material is one of the strongest known to man. It's 200 times stronger than steel. And although it might not be nuke-proof, it would be pretty close. Okay, now that we have our indestructible vehicle, what would this do for accidents on the road? Well, your car would be completely fine and you'd be paying a lot less in insurance, but just because your vehicle is indestructible doesn't mean that you are. Sure, fatalities and injuries for passengers would certainly be reduced. Having indestructible vehicles means your car won't explode and there would be less flying debris everywhere, but that won't stop you from being flung and tossed around if you did happen to get into an accident. And what about the people who aren't in vehicles? With indestructible cars roaming around, pedestrians would want to be much more careful, as getting hit by one of these would certainly mean death. SUVs are already some of the deadliest cars for pedestrians, so having roads lined with big trucks like this could only result in more pedestrian deaths. On the other hand, injuries inside of indestructible cars would be significantly reduced, so that's a good thing. What might not be so good is the fact that these things last forever. And by forever, I mean it. Literally. We're not talking 100 or 1,000 years. We mean until the end of time. No more car breakdowns and spending thousands of dollars on repairs. This all sounds like a great what if. But wait, that's not all. Come on, you knew this was coming. With indestructible cars, there's only one thing we would need to think about. How would we get rid of these things? You might be thinking, well, why would we need to do that? But let's face it, even if we had cars that would never break, we'd still want to buy new ones. You buy a new phone or new clothes when you don't really need them, so wouldn't that also apply to vehicles? Not only that, but car manufacturers would be enticing us to buy new cars every year as each iteration would implement new features that we didn't have previously. So, now that we're buying new cars, what would we do with our old ones? Right now, in the United States, over 12 million cars are recycled every year. And we're lucky enough that 86% of a car can be recycled, from the steel to the plastic. They're all melted down to be used for new cars. This is much better for the environment as less water and pollutants are used in comparison to making a new car. But since we can't recycle these old indestructible cars and brand new cars would still be made, it would create much more damage to the environment. These old cars would have to sit in a landfill somewhere. 
Luckily, you could save some of them for new drivers, but eventually, so many people would buy new cars that there would be more cars than people in certain parts of the world. This number would slowly increase as there's just no way to get rid of these indestructible cars. If we kept on manufacturing them, they'd eventually take over all the space we have on Earth. And if this isn't bad enough, we'd also have tons of job loss. Even though we'd still be making some new vehicles, it won't be anywhere near the 100 million we're producing globally today, meaning much fewer jobs in the car industry. So, having these indestructible cars might sound useful, but it would ultimately do more harm than good. A better approach would be to power all our cars with electricity instead of gas. But we'll leave that story for another What If.